So what are some simple ways I can tweak my bitmap based materials? Let's find out. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Chad from Grayscale Gorilla. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you my favorite ways of getting more out of bitmap based materials in Redshift. Let's jump in. Okay, so the easiest way to tweak the color of a bitmap based material is probably gonna be uh, through the actual base color, the texture itself. Uh, in our case, we're using Redshift, but you should be able to follow along with just about any uh, render that, that supports these sorts of workflows. So I've got uh, one of the materials from the Modern Surface Material Collection uh, by Grayscale Gorilla. Um, we've got a concrete loaded onto our object right now. I've just got this uh, shader ball going, and we wanna tint the color of this concrete. The easiest way to do that, and the way that I do it most of the time, is by grabbing that, uh, that image texture and jumping over to the Adjust tab. And under the Color Multiplier, you're gonna see you have a white color here. So whatever is in this color swatch is gonna be multiplied onto the texture here. So let's go ahead and isolate that guy so we can actually see what's going on here. Grab our Color Multiplier under our uh, image texture. And let's just maybe find a color that we wanna tint and just slowly start to bring in some of this this green color, maybe a little bit more blue in there. All right, and that is literally the simplest way to, to do it. And like, if you're not uh, familiar with this workflow, this will definitely help you uh, tint or add a little bit of color to any bitmap based material. Um, but there's other ways, there's lots of other ways to do this. And I'm gonna show you another way that I like to do it, which is gonna be using a color correct node uh, in between our, our base color texture and the material. So let's just grab that material and we're gonna throw that onto our shader ball. And you can see I've already got one set up here. We've just got our base color texture going into our color correct node and then that's going out to my material. But I wanna actually look at this out to the surface first so I can just see what it's doing. So the color correct node, um, if you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend playing around with it. It's very powerful, very, very nice. In fact, a lot of the renderers have these. Um, so from here, we can adjust the gamma, the contrast, the hue shift, saturation scale. In our case, we wanna play around with the hue shift and the saturation scale. We have a fairly, uh, well, it doesn't look like it has any color actually. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's give it like a saturation scale of maybe like three. And then we'll just start to bring in some of this hue shifting to find maybe that same sort of color that we were after before. Maybe a little bit more blue. There we go. Maybe bring that saturation scale up to like four, maybe up to like eight even. And this is just yet another way to be able to control the look and color of that of that base color. So again, we can just mess around with the gamma here. We have just a little bit more control than the other method. And of course we can adjust the contrast. Maybe we want to bring that gamma level down a little bit. And now let's take a look at all of that out to our material, and there we go. We have something that started off like this, and let's go back here and just tweak that back to normal so we can just have an A, B here. All right, so that's where we started, and that's where we ended up. So again, it's just another way to, to tweak, and, and I'm not done yet. There's one more method that I think is actually a really cool method uh, that I recommend everybody trying out. So we're gonna try this other method for tweaking the color, which is gonna be using a gradient. So let's grab that material. We're gonna throw that onto the onto the thing here. And you can see I've already got it set up. So let's just jump into the color gradient. Now, what am I doing here? I'm actually piping my base color texture into a ramp. And then that ramp is going to be dri driving uh, the diffuse color. So let's just build this from scratch. Ramp, let's grab a ramp here. Dot, drag that down, throw our bitmap material or bitmap texture into the ramp input. Let's look at the output of that ramp. Immediately you can see that it's automatically uh, given it uh, a source of auto. So it basically is just using the alt is basically what it's doing. So what this is doing is it's remapping the values of this texture into a ramp. So black to white, right? So that's what we're getting here. In fact, if I just like bring that knot up, we're actually just increasing uh, the black level, bringing that black level up, we can do the same thing with the white. So basically, we're right now we're clamping it. We're just clamping this material, or this texture rather. So let's just bring that back down to a normal state. But what's interesting about this is now you can start to remap these values. You can add other colors. So if we wanted to come in here, let's say, and dive down into this ramp, and let's just bring this up so we can see a little bit better. Load preset, let's grab a rainbow, and maybe we wanna double those knots and then maybe double them again. 
And now all of a sudden you can see that we've got this crazy rainbow color being remapped onto our concrete. So what makes the, why that's useful is because now you can start to introduce other colors. You can start to introduce other values. So here uh, in, the, in the ramp that I had up here before, it's just a simple kind of uh, brown to like a dark brown to get this kind of mud look. Let's go ahead and look at this. So now this starts to look a little bit more like dirt, a little bit more like clay, like some sort of like dry lake bed material. So yeah, that's just another interesting way of doing, uh, manipulating your base texture, your base color into something else. Uh, without having to get really crazy with all the nodes and without having to do a whole lot. These are nice, simple techniques that you can use uh, throughout your workflow. All right, in the next part, uh, I'm going to show you some other interesting ways of manipulating uh, your image-based textures to get more out of bitmap-based materials. All right, so we talked a little bit about using the adjust color multiplier uh, on your bitmap-based material, uh, but we can go a little step further. We can actually put some AO in here without having to like create another shader or maybe add AO through like a layer node or something like that. We can do that directly into our diffuse color. So how do we do that? Let's grab an AO, drop that in. Let's go ahead and look at the output of that AO just so we can see it a little bit better. I do like to sometimes put the AO into a ramp so that I have a more visual sort of way of manipulating that AO. Let's go ahead and look at that. And now just the ramp is just going to allow me to be able to clamp it down and maybe adjust some of these values in a more uh, friendly way. Okay, so let's throw this ramp into that color multiplier. Okay, so we'll look at the output of that. And now you can see we've got AO being multiplied onto our shader ball. And this is a great way to add uh, ambient occlusion to your material without having to dive in too heavily uh, to the other aspects of your shader. Maybe you don't have to use like a layered material. You don't have to do a layered RGB texture. It's just an easier way of, uh, of getting that look. And of course, because I have it in a ramp, I can come over here and just adjust the black level up if I want to just like bring this black level up here. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that's pretty good. And remember, you can tint this too. You can actually start to put in a little bit of color in here just to kind of make it feel maybe a little bit dirty. There you go. Maybe it's a little bit like sand or something. Maybe it's a little bit more in the reds. So that's just another way uh, to add a little bit more interest to your, uh, ba your diffuse color. So another thing that you can do uh, and this is kind of a cool technique that I use quite a bit. If I want to add like a sheen to something, let's just drag this material up. We're going to look at that. So let's say this, this concrete material is very rough and it has a really nice uh, Fresnel sheen to it, right? And the way that we're doing that is a bit different. The way that we're doing that with our diffuse color is that we're going into that adjust tab, but we're not messing with color multiplier. We're messing with color offset, which is essentially going to lift the black. So we're using a Fresnel node in Redshift here to give us that Fresnel uh, angle of incidence cur uh, ramp. So let's just go ahead and make one really quickly. Let's grab a Fresnel, drop that in. Let's go ahead and look at the output of that Fresnel. And the Fresnel is going to be using the index of refraction, which is totally fine. Uh, if, we're, if we decrease this, we're going to, not that far down, if we do like a 1.1, you're going to see that it's uh, it's sort of clamped there, and if we kind of increase that, we're going to get more of that of that white color creeping over to the front of our object. Uh, I want to probably keep this like a 1.4 or something like that, because I'm just trying to get like a sheen, like there's a, a thin layer of dust, or maybe there's just like some particulate on the surface that's like breaking up uh, the, the, the angle of incidence here. Okay, so what do we do? We could put this into a ramp to make it more uh, easy to control. In fact, I think I will do that. Um, actually, no, I won't. I'll keep it simple. So let's throw this Fresnel right into not the color multiplier, but the color offset. So we've already got one plugged in here. Let's just drag that right down into there. Let's look at this color, uh, the base color out to our surface here. Okay, cool. So now we can adjust how much this is affecting our object. We can come over to the, the fa front facing angle. So now it's kind of like basically uh, turning this whole front a little bit whiter. Maybe we want to bring that down. But now here's this perpendicular color. This is where we're going to start to have some fun. We could add like a, a tint to that if we wanted to, maybe something 
a little bit warm to make it look like there's a little bit of dirt on there. Maybe bring the intensity down, something in here. And now we're adding a little bit of a sheen to this. And we didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to like create another material. We didn't have to uh, do any sort of layering uh, with like a layer material or layer node. So let's just ju jump that into the, uh, into the surface here. Perfect. Okay, so that is working pretty well. Um, so that's just another way to start to manipulate your, your bitmap based uh, material diffuse color using the adjust tab. And like I said, this is going to be possible in, in Arnold, in Octane, other renders that support uh, the image based textures with the color multiplier and color offset. Okay, so we can go one step further. Now that we've seen what we can do with the color multiplier and the color offset, we can go one step further to create maybe a bit more of an aged look, a bit more of a of an older kind of concrete look. So if I jump into this material, and let's go ahead and look at that one, you can see I'm using a very similar technique that I did with the Fresnel. I'm using this time a curvature that's being piped into a ramp that's now driving the color offset. And what that's doing is it's taking the edges of our concrete and making them a little bit more white. And this is going to make it look like the concrete has aged a little bit more. And you can get more crazy with the curvature. In fact, I have a lot of videos on YouTube talking about how to add wear and tear to your materials uh, using curvature, but we're not going to dive into that. Uh, let's just start from scratch here. Let's grab a curvature. Let's go ahead and look at the output of that. And there we go. I'm not going to get too crazy with the settings, but obviously you would want to mess around with the radius. Uh, I'm going to put this into a ramp so that it's easier to control and see. All right, let's just drag that right in. Let's look at the output of that. All right, so now I can come over to this ramp and I can tweak its, its clamping. I actually want to just bring the white down. Perfect, something like that. Now if we just put this right into the color offset, let's look at the output of our base color. All right, we've got our ramp here. We can start to adjust maybe how harsh that is. That's good. We can even tint this, although I don't really think we need to because it's just not something that, you know, I don't, it's just not something that I would do. Uh, the other thing that you can do here if, with the curvature, if you want to get crazy, you could actually just, let's just peel off a copy of this. I'm just holding down control and let's look at the output of this. And maybe we want to change this from uh, convex to concave. And there we go. And now maybe we want to increase the radius to maybe like 0.8, something like that. Maybe it's like 1.2 somewhere in there. So just so that we're getting a little bit more of that. And I think I want to spread it even more than that. So let's just bring this up to like two. There we go. So now if we take this ramp and we just invert it, oop, not invert it. We want to invert the colors. I don't know if I can do that actually. Well, there's a, there's a feature request for Maxon. All right, we'll just do it manually really quickly here. Uh, now I'm just going to clamp this black down. We're going to throw this into the color multiplier and look at the output of that. And now we're just creating a little bit of dirt inside of the crevices of our concrete. And maybe we want to bring this up to like four or something like that. Now if we look at the output of that material, we've got a little bit more interest here based on where we were before, which is going to be, I'll just throw this original material on and where we ended up. It's just a little bit more visual interest and we didn't have to do a whole lot. In fact, it's pretty simple right now. We're just piping everything into our base color texture that's going out to our diffuse color. And of course, you can use these things to do crazy combinations. I'm not gonna get too crazy, but I do have one here where I do a combination and let's just go ahead and throw that up on here. So this is using the exact same material, another MSMC uh, concrete. And all I've done here is threw a little bit of AO into the color multiplier. I threw a curvature and a ramp like we did before into the color offset. And then I used an AO to color multiply the roughness because you, it's not just the, the diffuse color you can mess with. You can put these techniques into use anywhere that's using a bitmap. Obviously not for the, uh, the normal map. You don't want to be um, throwing curvatures into your normal map. So again, we started with something simple like a, a concrete like this. 
and you can very easily manipulate it into something like this without having to do a ton of work and not, without having to create some crazy spaghetti nodes. Oh, and I also forgot to mention there's a ramp that's actually changing the entire color of our concrete to give us this look. And that roughness uh, started off pretty rough, but if you notice here, here's another quick tip. This isn't necessarily about diffuse color, but these techniques can apply to roughness as well. So if the roughness material that, um, let's just go ahead and tweak this back down. I'm gonna actually take the AO out of here just for a second, just so I can show you this. All right, so this is the, the, a, uh, the roughness as it comes in with this co concrete material. And if you're not familiar with this technique, um, this is a, the best way to sort of adjust the roughness level of a bitmap uh, based material, whether it's EMC or MSMC in this case, you can actually just come down to the color multiplier and start to push this down, which is essentially going to make the entire roughness uh, value lower, which is going to make our material shinier. So if we wanted to like, you know, make it a very sort of shiny concrete, we could do that very easily right there. Uh, so that's just an, another way to drive that. And in our case, I'm using the AO so that it's actually bringing a lot of roughness into the, the sort of the crevices of our object here and uh, lowering the roughness on, on these like outer parts here. So it kind of makes it look a little bit more worn. All right, so last but not least, I just wanted to show you one other example. Let's go ahead and throw this last example on here. We've been looking a lot at concrete, but it actually, these techniques work uh, in areas or materials that already have a significant amount of color in them. So if I like take off this color correct node and pipe that directly into my material and I bring all these values back down to normal, this is where this plywood material uh, starts in the MSMC. Uh, and let's say we want to make it look like it's stained, like a stained wood. Well, I would start with maybe adding a color multiplier to sort of get me somewhere close. We're doing like a yellow stain here. That looks pretty good. And then what I would probably do is throw it into a uh, color correct node and sort of take it the rest of the way. And that would be to adjust the gamma a little bit, maybe bringing uh, the level scale down somewhere, darkening up a little bit there, just to kind of play around and get what I, get what I want out of it. And again, we started off with something that already had color in it, and we just used some of these same techniques to, to tweak those colors. All right, let's get back out here. Okay, so in summary, oh, and also one last tip. If you haven't figured this one out, this is a, a nice way uh, to organize the node inputs and outputs of your, uh, of your, of your materials and nodes in Redshift. Uh, you can just drag anything up to reposition it. So if it's not uh, sitting where you want, you can just drag that up to make it look nicer. Okay, so that about does it. Uh, we covered lots of different ways to manipulate uh, image-based uh, bitmap based materials in Redshift. A lot of these techniques will carry over into other renders. If you have a specific way that you like to manipulate uh, colors of bitmap based materials and I didn't show it, let me know in the comments. I would like to hear what you guys do and how, how you guys tweak your, your bitmap based materials. All right, thanks again and I'll see you next time. Welcome back everybody, thanks for watching. And remember, if you've got your own method that you like to use to tweak colors of bitmap based materials or maybe adjust things with color multiply, whatever, hit me in the comments below. I would love to hear how you're doing it. And it always just helps me learn, helps me grow. And that's what this is all about. So until next time, I'll see you around.